Five and a half years ago, our son Max was diagnosed with a brain tumor. To say unexpected is, I mean, it doesn't even capture it. I mean, I thought maybe he had a sinus infection. We got an MRI and we were rushed from that diagnostic MRI to the hospital for immediate surgery. They were able to partially remove or resect a part of a tumor that was intrinsic in the brain stem and part of it had grown out and they were able to resect the part that grew out, but there was all of this left in the brainstem. When the doctor sat me down and said, listen, you have to sit down, I have to talk to you first before going back to see your son. I just knew that there was something wrong and um, I said, is he gonna be okay? And they said, we don't know. Max came home not able to walk. He had lost a lot of mobility and we couldn't understand his speech very well and his, the left side of his body wasn't working. And our neurosurgeon said, you know, my wife is an acupuncturist, she can help. Um, her name's Ruth McCarty, would you like to see her? It's been eight years since I first released the documentary, 9,000 Needles, a film which chronicled my brother Devin's unconventional journey as he fought to recover from a devastating stroke. After witnessing firsthand the amazing results of acupuncture and a healthcare system which successfully integrated Eastern and Western medicine, I couldn't help but ask myself, why do we have to travel all the way to China to get it? And why isn't this life-changing medicine available to us right here at home? This is Doug Dirt, the filmmaker I told hey you guys. about. I'm about to find out as I meet some of today's leading healthcare practitioners who are at the forefront of rethinking and remodeling acupuncture's role in today's modern medicine. My name is Ruth McCarty. I'm the Clinical Director of Acupuncture and Chinese Medicine at Chalk Children's. I started my program at Pacific College of Oriental Medicine in 1998. I did a fellowship in China where I saw how Chinese medicine could be seamlessly executed with Western medicine, and I really wanted to come back and try to build a program like that in the United States. When I became licensed, I opened a clinic up here and started treating cancer kids from chalk and the moms were really the ones that said what is your child doing? One of the moms grateful for Ruth McCarty's work is Audra Wilford. I visited her and her husband Justin to hear about Ruth's unique partnership with the Children's Hospital of Orange County and the role it played in their son Max's battle to overcome the devastating effects of a brain tumor. Hey! Hey, Doug, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Thanks for having oh, me. Oh, it's awesome to have you. Come on in. All right, this will be fun. All right. Hi. How old was Max here? Four and a half. Mm -hmm. So this is right after surgery, and this is when he woke up. He had an external, he had, you know, um, tubes coming out to of his To drain head. it? Or? Yeah. Uh -huh. See what, kind of like how large his head is there. He had a really terrible hydrocephalus for a long time. There's our first smile. Wow. And it was amazing the first time he sat up. And... <gasps> oh, wow, how cool that. See how hard that is. Wow. And there we go. That's with Ruth. He just did so well with her. Max was in the pediatric intensive care unit and his neurosurgeon asked me to go in and talk to the parents. It was people like Ruth that kind of pulled us back into the world and said, you know what, we are going to take this one step at a time and he's going to recover. We were in the hospital for three and a half weeks after that surgery. Max came home not able to walk. We had lost a lot of mobility and we couldn't understand his speech very well and his, the left side of his body wasn't working. And he was going immediately into chemotherapy at that point. The treatments were really aimed at rehabilitation, making Max's motor function as normal as possible, that he could use his left hand, that he could sit up to work on his speech, his swallow, all of these kind of acute things that happen after surgery. But when they're stable and they go home, then a whole nother course of treatment begins. These kids can have radiation, these kids can have chemo. And with those treatments come a whole set of other challenges. I remember taking Max in to see Ruth at her office and she was very clear. She didn't want to say, you know, through what I'm doing, I'm gonna be able to cure him or anything else. She said, okay, so these are the things that I can do for Max. 
we can help with his fatigue, we can help with his nausea, and we can help with his pain. It was like, okay, we need all of those things and we need them really bad. Fatigue, nausea, and pain, this is perfect. Those are the exact things we need. And then when we saw Max start to flourish after this, it was really the cornerstone that we could build everything else we were doing off of. Okay, Max, can you walk back here to me? <laughs> he had about a year and a half of chemo and intensive physical uh, therapy, speech and occupational therapies. And then he would go for acupuncture, traditional Chinese medicine twice a week. And we also instituted diet changes for him and, and supplementation. And he handled the chemotherapy like no one had ever seen. Not sick once, never went into the ER, never had a blood transfusion, no platelet transfusions. He just really did so well. Did it mean a lot for you when you look at a treatment like acupuncture and, and again, the whole holistic approach of, of those modalities, did it mean a lot for you at the time to hear that coming from like your neurosurgeon, like a Western Huge. doctor that you respected? Absolutely. Absolutely. The conventional approach just asks us to bring our kid, hook him up, and then stand back, and then just come back and do it again. Just return. The fact that we felt we had somebody on the inside who was a champion for us was absolutely crucial because otherwise we would have felt completely disempowered. What we had in Ruth and Dr. Loudon were institutional champions who said, we can do more than this. It's time to visit Children's Hospital of Orange County, also known as Chalk. It was founded in 1964 and is now recognized as one of the leading children's hospitals in the U.S. We've come to meet Dr. William Loudon. He's a pediatric neurosurgeon and the scientific director of the Chalk Neuroscience Center for Research, who also happens to be Ruth McCarty's husband, and they make quite a team. My name is Dr. Bill Loudon. I am the section chief of neurosurgery at the Children's Hospital of Orange County. I run the neurotrauma program. I am the director of the Gamini Center but most importantly, I'm a neurosurgeon that focuses on operating on children. My interest in traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture started many years ago. As I was a chief resident of neurosurgery, I realized that I was on the edge of becoming a real independent neurosurgeon, and I was evaluating the strengths and weaknesses of my potential. And it became very clear to me that there were very large gaps in my healthcare delivery to my patients. When they're in the operating room, I have 100% focus on them and can really use my skills. But what happens to them after that? A brain tumor patient, for example, after I operate on them and after they receive their chemotherapy and their radiation therapy, I'm really not actively involved in their care. And there are large gaps of time where there really is nobody taking care of these kids as far as the quality of life issues. So I started to try to figure out how can I do a better job of taking care of my patients even when they're no longer directly under my care. I pursued a number of alternatives, but the one that I kept coming back to was the concept of traditional Chinese medicine. My world very often is focusing on maybe a cubic centimeter for three or four hours at a time. I take care of the disease the diseased organ, the diseased tissue, the, the congenital anomaly, but I don't take care of the patient. And I think that's a fatal error in our medical system right now. Traditional Chinese medicine, in contrast, is unable to not see the patient. Their entire philosophy is based on the dynamic equilibrium of the patient. So the disease that we focus on is simply an imbalance in their overall system. The two philosophies actually Fit together perfectly. I was so convinced on this that I actually sought out Ruth to try and bring her skills into my practice. Dr. Loudon and I met when we were 19 at UCSD, when we were doing our undergraduate, so he knew and trusted me. He realized that Western care didn't have everything to offer, and that's when he actually started searching for what would be an alternative. We started it as an outpatient uh, benefit. So for example, my brain tumor patients, when they would leave the hospital, they would still be very sick. They would still have many issues. 
and they would come to her outpatient and she was able to relieve many of their symptoms so much so that they started to consider this as standard of care for them, necessary care for them. When they would come back in the hospital, they would ask the question, why can't they receive traditional Chinese medicine in the hospital? It's a good question. After probably two years of committees and applications, we actually had to invent a title for Ruth to bring her into the hospital. Once I started just going door to door and talking to physicians and nurses and administrators and having the moms tell their side of the story, it was really pretty easy to get into the hospital. They really saw the benefit of it. I'm Maria Mignon, I'm a pediatrician and the chief medical officer here at CHOP. And before coming here as an administrator, which was 19 years ago, I actually practiced uh, pediatrics for 19 years. That's a lot of years as a pediatrician. How did this relationship or partnership with Ruth and Chalk, how did that come about? Well, in the early 2000, I believe it was 2001, Dr. Bill Loudon started referring some of the patients to Ruth as an outpatient. Because at that time, we didn't have a, a, a way to have an acupuncture within the medical staff. It was not really understood what they did by a lot of individuals, but we knew that the kids here in the hospital could very much benefit by acupuncture, not only oncology kids, but other kids with chronic uh, pain. So I think it just, the stars aligned because we had physicians that wanted Ruth, Ruth wanted to participate. I was very much supportive of that, um, to have someone like her and our medical staff. So we created a, a way of credentialing her into our medical staff allied health personnel. And was that a difficult thing to do within a hospital system? Well, you know, it could be if you don't have a someone in a leadership position in the hospital that doesn't believe in it. So because I was supportive of that, I was able to really encourage everybody and demonstrate what would be the benefits of having and acupuncture as, as part of our ally health. In your experience, this, the medical staff, the doctors and nurses, have they found it pretty easy to integrate all of this with their care? I think that once they see th the results, it's, you really have a lot of buy-in from the, from the physicians to the point where now is a routine consult to have acupuncture. So this is the oncology floor, and I spend a lot of my day here. Um, most of my consults are actually written by oncologists to support quality of life of these oncology patients. And what's so important, every child at CHOC, if their physician writes a Chinese medicine consult, re can receive treatment at no cost. Wow. So it's a philanthropically funded program by different donors, um, and every child is eligible to receive treatment. And how many, like right now, just roughly, how many children are you treating, say, on this floor? Usually, I'll treat anywhere from 5 to 14 on this floor. And sometimes, and I have consults on other floors too, so it's not unusual to have a patient on every floor in every unit of the hospital. And are these kids, like, immediately post-surgery, or? Um, these kids are, um, they're after surgery, or they're here for chemotherapy or they're recovering from surgery, or they're here for bone marrow transplants, many issues that they can benefit. These kids, do they often come to your clinic then afterwards once they're follow, discharged? Yes, I follow many of these patients in my outpatient clinic to support quality of life. When you have an oncology diagnosis, you'll have many admissions to the hospital. You'll be outpatient for weeks at a time, and then you'll be admitted for chemotherapy or for different surgeries. So it's a very long process, and I try to stay involved in their care every step of the way. There is no other hospital that has Chinese medicine mainstreamed the way Children's Hospital does. In the emergency room, in the neonatal intensive care unit, in the pediatric intensive care unit, any doctor at any time can go in and click a button and order Chinese medicine for their patient. And that's truly unique. My general philosophy to trying to take care of my patients is to try and bring every possible positive 
treatment to them that I can. Unfortunately, we still have a culture where many of these ideas that are sort of not mainstream are sometimes actually critically uh, reviewed by their physicians. I don't think that anyone really should have any kind of a philosophical problem with looking to any kind of a practice that has the ability to improve the quality of life of their child. Therefore, I think if any healthcare provider really questions that particular aspect, that they really have no barriers that should limit them from bringing traditional Chinese medicine to their practice. Every child deserves the best that we have to give. I'm afraid we've become so myopic at looking at the disease that we've forgotten to look at the human being. And I think that's what we've been working on all these years, is a truly holistic view of the child. I'm Kate Scanello and I'm 11 years old. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. Do we have? Yes. Yeah. No. Do we use it? Yes. 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 To cook? Yes. yes. When Cade was three, he started having eye issues. His left eye started to go in, so we patched it for a good year and a half and didn't get any better. And then right about his fifth birthday, I went to an eye doctor appointment and the optic nerves are swollen, which was a new new development. And he said, get an MRI right away. Literally, we were in the hospital with, with Lucy, who was two days old. And I was upstairs getting an MRI with Cade while she was downstairs with Lucy. And that's the VSC section. And then sure enough, MRI. And then that revealed a brain tumor about the size of an egg sitting right on his optic nerves. You know, it was a real um, just crazy your whole life is changing in that moment because it wasn't any longer something I could do as his mom. It was, okay, this is a serious medical intervention time. We went up to Chalk right away that night and did uh, first surgery the next morning. They removed about 30% of the tumor, did pathology, and then scheduled a craniotomy, a bigger surgery, about three weeks later. The surgery for Cade went exceptionally well. We accomplished our goals in the surgery and had anticipated no complications whatsoever. But upon awakening, we noticed that Cade wasn't moving half of his body, which is obviously a very, very frightening finding when a child's waking up from a large brain surgery. Subsequent imaging, in fact, revealed that Cade had had a major stroke as a result of some part of the surgery. This was a devastating finding for Kate, and it really spoke to a much poorer outcome than we'd anticipated. It was scary because we didn't know what to expect. You know, mm -hmm. I don't, I've never done this before. I, I don't know anybody his age who's ever had a stroke. Um, no. You know, couldn't move the right side and couldn't speak. Couldn't yeah, speak. And so speech. everything, he was a typical boy, you know. Um, so we went from that to just not knowing, not knowing if he'd recover, not knowing how that works. We wanted mm -hmm. answers, like ask the doctor, when will he talk again? Well, you know, and they were just, it's wait and see. Mm -hmm. How did you decide to interject traditional Chinese medicine or yeah. these therapies into his recovery? I didn't have any experience with acupuncture. Mm -hmm. Thought it was a little far out. And my sister the day, she one day said, have you thought about acupuncture? I'm like, um, we're on the pick queue. I don't, I don't think so. The next day, Dr. Loudon came in our um, surgeon, and he said, I want to talk to you about something outside the box. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. And it was acupuncture. I said, tell me more. And he said, well, it's my wife. And she works at the hospital. And we said, great. I was brought in because Cade was having a very hard time connecting his brain function to his body. He couldn't speak. He couldn't move. He was kind of looking straight ahead. I obtained consent and did one scalp needle on Cade, one little scalp needle, and it was an amazing thing to watch. I watched Cade's giant spirit kind of sit correctly into his being, and his eyes lit up, and he started moving his head back and forth like this, and immediately started talking to his mom. Right after a stro my stroke or my tumor, I'm not sure, um, my neck was like this, and everybody was trying to get me to move my neck, my 
my making me too many. And um, Roast came in and did pokes all over my head, and I just did that. Like, yeah. For one time? Yeah, one time. Wow. Yeah. We consulted Ruth very early on in his care, and she has remained a mainstay in his care since that time. And over the course of the last five years, I've been able to watch Cade go from this very, very debilitated child to a very high-functioning child now. One of the really interesting ways of actually quantitating this improvement was looking at the facial paralysis that Cade had when he awoke. It was very extreme, complete loss of all animation of the side of his face. And over the course of the years, presumably from the treatment that he received uh, through acupuncture and other modalities, he's essentially regained complete facial function. That really doesn't fit into our paradigm of recovery. So it really does, I think, speak, although anecdotally, to the role of using traditional Chinese medicine as a complementary practice for managing the recovery, even of a child as injured as Cade. Let's talk about acupuncture for a minute. So now you go to Ruth's, right? What happens when you go to her office? So I come in, I get pokes all over my head, and then my hand, and then my foot, and then my cheek, and the cheek one. It helps me for my smile because I, my mom found me in the mirror doing this. Um, I, my, my mom said, what are you doing, um, Kate? I'm like, I'm trying to fix my smile. And I said, what's wrong with it? And he goes, does it go up? And I said, okay, well, let's talk to Ruth about it. We told Ruth, and then she said, I can start doing pokes in, in his cheek for, to help him um, get um, the other side up. Wow, did it help? Yeah. It looks like it did. Yeah, now I can do. According to his MRI, he should not be able to do it. Like, it's not possible. And yeah. it's happening. You'll see a curve here, and, you know, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. We've had two instances in the last six months where doctors would meet him after they've seen the MRI, and they, he is not what they expect. By looking at the picture of his brain, mm -hmm. you know, they formulate a picture of what he's going to be able to do. And then when they meet him, yeah. They're blown away. That, what I see in that MRI should not present right. how well he does and the, and the things that he can do. How effective was adding the traditional Chinese medicine, what Ruth does, in helping Kate through the process of chemotherapy? Yeah, no, I think it was incredible. And they said that you're going to have to miss chemo. And his counts will drop and this is part of the process. I think one time we had to do that in a year and a half. His appetite, it helped with his, keep his appetite up. Nausea. Um, yep, all the things that, that she had done. We were told Kate will be hospitalized during chemo for fevers. So just, you know, prepare. Well, I'll tell you, Kate never was. Mm -hmm. We went twice a week, that whole 18 months, and received acupuncture and we did moxa that helps his immune system. And I mean, so many different things that I just, I feel like she made this really bumpy path. Mm -hmm. She provided a bridge. When you talk to people about acupuncture, people want to see a study. They want to see like scientific results. They want to see really black and white road signs to say this is works and this is how it yes. works. But then I sit down with people like you and when you see a mom say that he could have smiled same yeah. he now is who better to know than a mom and a dad if it's working or not? Yeah. I think for me a big indicator if it's working is you look in a waiting room and in Ruth's waiting room there were parents who had more physically challenged children than I had and they did not miss they saw the results and moms know moms don't do things that don't work we don't have time and doctors are so quick to give all these medications for something but then they're a little weary of acupuncture and I just, it's been um, frustrating at times and then it's been also really exciting because then they meet Kate. He is the story, mm -hmm. you know, and you can't argue with that. What in the morning? That you, you don't eat? like and this he does. Yes! <laughs> Kate has made tremendous progress. He had completely had paralysis on one side of his face. He couldn't smile. He had difficulty closing his eye. He couldn't hardly walk. He had to learn how to speak again, how to swallow again, how to basically do everything. He has 
just made tremendous progress. He plays on a baseball team. He plays on a football team. He's a voracious reader. He does really well in school, and he's just elected class president. And he ran a mean campaign. What would you say to other young kids out there that are having the same kind of challenges or might have had a stroke or cancer and they're just now starting their treatment? What would you say to kids like that? Like, just keep fighting. Like, you'll, like, you'll get better. It just takes time. As I was getting ready to wrap up this incredibly inspiring story, I got word that Ruth had just opened the doors on her new clinic, and I decided to pay her and Dr. Loudon one last visit. Tell me a little bit about where we are today and why this is such an exciting time. So we are sitting in the um, waiting community treatment room of the new Open Mind Modalities slash Max Love Project headquarters. We're a minute and a half walk from Children's Hospital of Orange County, so we hope to expand our services to the pediatric population of Orange County, and it's really exciting. Our long-term plans now are that we started with the patient and we developed the concept of the family-centered care program. I think now we're actually able to look to the next level, and that is who are the caregivers for the caregivers. We want to start reaching out to the physicians and the nurses and the physical therapists as well and give them a place where they can also feel comfortable, get away from the hospital benefit from the integrated medicine and the nutrition and all of the other and things. Have that respite, to recharge, and I think it's really important. Earlier today, while we were waiting for this interview, I watched you treat a couple of young children. Um, I did notice that at least one of them you were treating free of charge. I have never closed my doors based on ability to pay. So I have worked with different organizations that have contributed funds for these kids. I do it as a part of service. The Max Love Foundation helps out and raise funds for families who just don't have the means. I think we started from the place where if we didn't take care of the kids, and there wasn't any other safety net. So it, it just never was even a question. But it is amazing to watch over the last number of years to see conventional payers start to contribute because it's good for the kids, it's also good for them. You know, we provide a much more cohesive healthcare delivery system by including integrated medicine. This is going to inevitably save them money. It's a good, it's good for them, it's good for the kids. This is an amazing program. I mean, I think it's going to be a great model for a lot of people to emulate. But could it have happened without somebody in the acupuncture world like Ruth really driving it forward? We are clearly carving a middle path here with very special people. And it would have never happened without somebody like Ruth being there to promote this, to become a non-threatening very positive force who garnered incredible support from the patients, the parents, and her colleagues or physicians. I think people who are even remotely interested in mm -hmm. this need to get more Ruth and learn from her. I, I truly believe that a lot of acupuncturists just don't really even believe that she's doing this. So <laughs> to be able to show them this via people like you is incredibly important because this is what, the, what it's about. It, it's not one extreme or the other. The way it works is putting them together and getting the best you can of it. And the faster we can promote this model, the faster other hospitals, other patients, other communities will benefit from this. You got two grown men doing that too. That's true. You're doing amazing things. That's true. Yeah. I have a very deep and abiding belief in service. I live my life through service. I try to be where my creator wants me to be. And I really believe like all these pieces that came together and all the doors that opened and the way this happened over the last 17 years, I think we had some bigger help. To learn more about the benefits of acupuncture or open my modalities in the Max Love Foundation, please contact the Acupuncture Now Foundation.